So I'm going to be giving a talk in BitHopper. Um, so the short version is it's a, it's a proxy protocol for the Bitcoin mining protocol. Um, it's not a proxy protocol, it's proxy software. Um, and so I talked about a lot more about what that actually means last time. Um, but really all you need to know is that it's proxy software. Um, so I guess this is my status update slash an explanation of what, what I'm doing next. Um, so what I did this so far is I took BitHopper and I redid it from scratch for like the fifth time. Um, and this time I think I did it properly, hopefully. Um, so some of the really great things that I added was there's a development branch. So I'm not doing my development live and breaking everyone's code when I screw something up, which happened a lot about three months ago. Um, also there's test cases, which are shockingly helpful, particularly when you're writing network applications, because if you can get a good test case for that, then you can basically get to explore your entire pipeline. If something breaks, it's really immediately obvious especially in the corner cases, because there's a lot of them and I don't use most of the features myself. Um, uh, so it went from about 6,000 lines to 15, 1,600 lines. Um, it's also a heck of a lot easier to understand. Um, so I did a lot of really, really dumb things. Um, this started off as one file, because I just wrote this overnight for fun, because someone said you couldn't do it. Um, and so this is what it looked like three months ago. Um, so all the Python things were just in their own directory. Um, each of these folders was a sub-dependency, as in another Python package, that rather than using the Python package manager, I ripped the raw source out of it and shoved it in my project, because my users were too dumb to figure out how to install dependencies, and this was easier than trying to explain what was going on. Um, that was mostly because I just gave them a list of dependencies and said, figure out how to install it. And that's, that's pretty hairy on Windows, especially given that some of these only compile for very specific versions of Windows in 64-bit mode or 32-bit mode, and they have a lot of dependencies within them. Um, also, yeah, I think that's mainly the big issue of this slide. Um, other things I did is that rather than using like a modular structure where each file is a module, I put a class inside each module, right? Because classes are great. And so every single one of these classes would have to act as other classes. And so I went, oh, I can create a master class that has all the classes. So pretty much all of these little self dot whatever are setting it, one of these variables to be some sort of class that's really a module. And then all these module class things had to depend on each other. And so they would be calling each other via the BitHopper module. So they would like record an instance that uh, reference the BitHopper module and they would call themselves. And that's why you get screwy shit like, um, here you like set up the scheduler because every single one of these needs it, but it doesn't actually get initialized anywhere in here. It gets initialized in like the plugin submodule. And so I had to like, it was, it was very, very hairy because I was basically doing dependency resolution on the fly. It also meant when I switched this to multi-threaded code, it just broke in a giant spectacular fashion because I could no longer control the order things initialized in, which was very, very interesting, which is why I'm not doing this, but if you do this, you shouldn't. Um, also, I decided that this best way, because I, I thought that you know I could separate out my network polling layer, so this is the layer that keeps track of like 40 websites on the internet and whether they're up or down, whether they're accepting work, and whether they've realized there's a new block and all sorts of other junk. And so, I wrote that module and I thought it was great, and then I realized I had to use it. And so I had it in a Git sub-module, and none of my users knew how to do that, even though they figured out how to use Git. Um, so they just said, oh, just make it work. So rather than publish it being via the Python publishing package library, I wrote functions that literally would download Git for you, execute Git to initialize your sub-module, pull it, but that was too hard, so just made a new Git repo inside your sub-module folder, and then um, pulled it. And then when that broke on about 50% of the user's machines, it would fall back to downloading the raw zip file off of GitHub, which also broke whenever people like blocked GitHub or anything else sort of scary happened on the network. Um, so I was giggling about this for about a week, and then it started breaking, and I realized it was a really dumb idea. Um, so this is, this is going the way of the doo-doo. Um, I feel like it should be you know, recorded so that no one else tries this. Um, so I guess the next, next steps right now is I actually re-implemented all of the core. So right now it mines, it does a lot of stuff people need. Um, what it doesn't do is the tricky stuff that the older program did that I don't touch anymore because I physically can't understand it. It's about 3,000 lines of looping callbacks that don't make any sense. Um, I accidentally fix it occasionally because it'll break and I won't notice. And then I'll fix something in it because I'm looking at something else and I see some obvious horrendous error. Um, so all that's really left is this long polling module. And so in the Bitcoin protocol, you're mining on a port, right? But um, what happens is that there's these sort of out of server events, right? A new block is found. So the server has to reset everything internally. So all the miners should reset everything internally as well. And so there's sort of a second long pull channel that you should receive a block back on that says, hey, you should reset everything. And so I have to proxy that. The issue is that if you just give, allow people, the miners to connect directly to the server, 
because they're not submitting work on that channel. If they submit it through our proxy, our proxy doesn't know where to send it because every work unit is server specific and you're connected to like 20 servers. Um, so it has to proxy these as well. Um, and so there's actually a lot of information contained in them. So like you can filter servers, you can actually track server states solely via the long pull channel, which is something that a lot of server owners don't believe, which is good because you can still make money off of it. Um, you can also trigger servers. There was a very large, complicated IRC bot that you know that was a botnet for a couple of weeks that was distributing Bitcoin network information via IRC to help make these long pulls more accurate. Um, so that needs to get rewritten to use a distributed hash table I wrote. Just some guy Cornell is using now, actually. Um, so that's sort of the big thing. Also, there needs to be a configuration website because all that you really need to configure is your workers, and that's up and working right now. But um, one, there's no authentication or login, and it wasn't in the previous version, but that was a glaring flaw because a lot of people got their computers hacked because my code wasn't secure and then they ran it on a public IP and just got royally just destroyed. Um, <laughs> also, it, it really should give them a lot more information. The old one had a very nice status page that server owners would use to just watch their servers and every, all the other servers because it would tell you a lot of just interesting info about reject rates and whether or not it was up and whether it could be pulled and how fast it was pulling. Um, so that needs to get re-implemented. Um, but that's basically the status so far. Um, so thank you to Tom Sullivan for giving me mother, me money, uh, Professor Morthy for setting up this program, um, my users for not shooting me or hunting me down, and everyone who's written code to fix this giant mess. Um, it's getting into less of a mess. Um, any questions? Bye.